Hi, I'm Mark Graham, and here we find ourselves down on the Mzunduzi River in Peter Maritzburg, the home of the Doozy Canoe Marathon. And what we're doing today is looking at the SAS-5 biomonitoring, rapid biomonitoring technique. This is this uh, production is largely driven by the Nas National River Health Program and the desire within that program to get standardization and ensuring quality control around the application of the various methods. It's been sponsored by the Water Research Commission and really what we're looking at today is a, a review of the entire SAS-5 protocol from site selection, equipment, how to sample, all the way through to analysis of the methodology and to try and ensure that in fact we have a, a solid, robust, uh, standard method out there that anybody watching this production would be able to apply wherever they're working and ensure that in fact the results that come out are really reflecting what's the health of the river and a water quality picture rather than simply somebody's interpretation of the method which may or may not be strictly correct. What is important to note today is that this is a production highlighting the key elements of the SAS-5 rapid bioassessment methodology. For the full method and the detail for the different uh, aspects of how the method's applied, one should really carefully consider the rapid South African scoring system version 5 rapid bioassessment technique uh, Dickens and Graham, published in the African Journal of Aquatic Sciences in 2002. That's the definitive methodology for the application of this method. So the advantages of the typical biomonitoring techniques, of which SAS-5 is one of them, is that one can undertake these techniques with relatively little equipment. You don't need much to get into a river and start sampling. Once you've got your sample, it doesn't take too much to learn to identify these characters. The techniques are therefore relatively simple. And the, probably one of the key advantages is that once you've collected your sample, you come out with a very quick indication of the health of that system. What that's useful for is being able to then take that information and in the field, actually investigate, look around and see where the sources of pollution might be coming from. It also has the distinct advantage of being able to integrate the entire water quality picture. So whether it's uh, pH or conductivity or some other pollutant, it's picking up that total picture and giving us an indication of the health of that system. However, it's not a complete panacea for all monitoring. There are some disadvantages. It does have suffer the problem of not being able to clearly identify what the source of the pollution is directly. Is it a fecal sewage type pollution or heavy metals or chemicals and so on? It also doesn't necessarily tell you exactly when the pollution event took place, although it gives you some indication. It additionally uh, is limited in cases where the flows might be such that you can't get into a river to sample it. And to some degree it's also habitat dependent. If you, you need a reasonable range of habitats, for the site to express itself and give the full opportunity to indicate what's at, that, at the site. But I suppose in summary though, it is a bit of a red flag indicator. It shows us whether or not the river's healthy and from there one's able to continue and look around and perhaps use other chemical type means of investigating a pollution source or why a river's not healthy.